section 11, all right, section 23-31-232A, notwithstanding any other provision of law upon express permission given by the appropriate church official or governing body, any person may carry a concealable weapon, all right, whether concealed or openly carried on the least premises of an elementary school or secondary school if a church leases the school premise or areas within the school for church services or official church activities. What's up everybody? Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today we're going to be talking about carrying a handgun and going into a church right, or other religious sanctuary and we're going to kind of explain um, how religious sanctuary is defined uh, just so you've got a good understanding of what options you have and what the law says. And like I've said in my other videos, it's a legal system, not a justice system. All right, so you need permission, written or signed, to carry a handgun. All right, I just want to give everybody a little bit better understanding and break down uh, what some of the laws and the codes say uh, outside of my under, uh, places that you need permission video, okay? So we're going to be getting into some of what the actual codes and everything says. Again, it's a legal system, not a just system. I'm only telling you what the law says. I'm not going to get in some huge debate in the comments and crap like that over what your feelings are or what you think it says or anything like that because how you interpret it is up to you. How I interpret it is based off uh, my experience with people that I know within law enforcement and some self-defense attorneys that I know that I've spoken with. So let's get into it churches, other established religious sanctuaries, all right, once you've gotten permission of the appropriate church officials or church governing body. So I always tell people, start with your pastor. Sometimes your pastor will let the deacons do it. Uh, sometimes the pastor will let their safety team do it. Okay, it just depends, but I always recommend starting with your pastor and going from there. Now, if we actually look at the law, all right, in section 16-23-20, part A, it is unlawful whether or not a person has a concealed weapons permit for anyone to carry about their person any handgun, whether concealed or not, unless otherwise specifically authorized by law into a part eight, church or other established religious sanctuary unless express permission is given by the appropriate church officials or governing body. So just like I talked about at the beginning. Now, if we look at section 11, all right, section 23-31-232A, notwithstanding any other provision of law upon express permission given by the appropriate church official or governing body, any person may carry a concealable weapon. Okay, we're gonna pause here for a second. Concealable weapon, I've talked about this in other videos. All right, it's not a handgun, it's a concealable weapon. It's gotta measure 12 inches or less from its greatest dimensions. Go check that out. All right, whether concealed or openly carried on the least premises of an elementary school or secondary school, if a church leases the school premise or areas within the school for church services or official church activities. This provision can't, because I can't talk today, this provision contained in this section apply only during those times that the church has the use and enjoyment of the school property pursuant to its lease with the school and only the areas of the school 
within the lease agreement any related parking areas or any reasonable ingress or egress between these areas. A school district may request that a church utilizing school property for its services disclose and notify the school district if persons are or may be carrying concealable weapons on the school property. These provisions of this section do not apply during any time students are present as a result of a curricular or extracurricular school sponsored activity that is taking place on school property. So that's what your law says. Now, if we're gonna break this down into layman's terms, if a church is using a school for its service, all right, then during that time, the school is a church or the part of the school that the church is leasing. It is a church in the eyes of the law. You only have to get permission from the church. But just understand the school district can ask for a list of names of people that are our caring. So if you don't want them knowing that, you're probably not gonna get permission to carry. The school has that right. They're, it's leasing, all right, the church is leasing the school. So the district has that right. But now if, if while some school sponsored event is going on at the same time the church is going on, then that permission is paused during that time frame. So what I'm talking about is, is it Seventh Seventh Day Evangelist? If I get this wrong, please forgive me. All right, I'm I'm not versed in religious stuff. All right, call me what you want to say what you want. I don't really give a damn. Uh, but I know there is a certain religion that does their church service on Saturdays. So let's say that church leases some school property and there's a cheerleading event going on, right? Or there's a softball event or baseball or whatever. If there is something that is extracurricular or curricular, like I said, so meaning if, if it's something sponsored by the school, okay, permission is paused during that time frame. Be mindful of that. If you get caught, we're back to improper carry like I've discussed in other videos. Okay, so I want to make sure everybody understands the school one. The school district can ask for a list of names of people that are carrying. Two, permission is paused when there are spot or whether where there are school events going on. Okay, please understand that. I'm not trying to make this difficult. I'm only telling you what the law says. So now let's talk about religious sanctuaries, all right, and what that means. If you look up the definition, a religious sanctuary is a sacred place for worship or a holy place set apart from the ordinary world. The word sanctuary has multiple meanings. Okay, that means a holy place, a place for worship or a, re, re, I can't talk today. Lord have mercy, I can't talk today, All right? It is a place of worship or a, re, re, I, can't, I can't say this word, all right? Reliquary for holy artifacts. If I didn't say it right, screw you. I, am, I mean, I ain't an English major. All right, I teach people how to shoot. I teach people to understand self-defense. All right, in a church, the sanctuary is usually the worship space, which includes the area around the altar, all right, or the entire interior. Now let's look at, at another religious sanctuary, places of asylum. Now this was normally a place of refuge for crim criminals or fugitives. All right, this is based on the idea that holy places are not subject to the powers of the world. 
In modern times, churches have provided sanctuary for refugees and illegal aliens. Okay, I'm not gonna, again, I'm not getting down into the nitty gritty of what you think is right and wrong and all that stuff. I'm telling you what the law says. All right, there are some nature reserves that are considered religious sanctuaries. All right, this is land set aside for plants or animals to breed, protected from hunting or harvesting. Originally, these types of sanctuaries all right, were natural locations such as groves or hills all right, where the divine or sacred was believed to be especially present. Now, you've seen some of the, you know, if you've looked at some of your history with Indians and things like that, they, this is a lot of what was going on. Some of these places are even natural monuments and different things like that now. But I just wanted to go over this to give everybody what the actual law says when it comes to churches or other established religious sanctuaries, as they call it, and help you understand what the definition of some of the sanctuaries are. Now, when it actually gets into the legal system and all that stuff, it's, it's how they're going to interpret it. It's how you interpret it. I'm kind of let you know how I've interpreted based off my experience and dealing and interacting with some self-defense attorneys. All right. And I know I've said it numerous times and I'm going to keep saying it to make sure you understand it is a legal system, not a justice system. Do your research, interpret it how you want to. So just understand, you've got to get permission, written and signed, all right, or typed. If it's typed, it's got to have a signature, either an electronic signature or an actual handwritten signature, but it's got to have a signature. And like I've talked about before, okay, look at possibly becoming a member of USCCA. If you don't like them, that's fine. I'm not here to make you like them or anything like that. But you need to have some legal defense for self-defense. They have great options for the legal defense and they have some great training options as well too. Please go check them out. I'll have their link up here. All right, I hope this helps everybody. If you, again, if you ever have questions, put it in the comment below, use my link tree. I'll have it here in the screen. It'll be down in the description. Please feel free to reach out to me. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what the law says. It's up to you on how you interpret it. All right, please, thank you for watching. Please continue to like, subscribe, share, comment. Please continue to support. Everything you do is greatly, greatly appreciated. I cannot thank you all enough. And don't forget about our affiliates, Excess Sites, No Other Choice, and also Core Essential. All right, I'll have their links up with my promo codes here in the screen so you can go and check them out. When you get ready to make your purchase, use my promo code, get yourself a discount, and get you some good quality, de uh, I was about to say some good quality deer. I've got deer season on my mind. All right, but some good quality gear. All right, and always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.